What's up guys, this is Phantoms Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm excited to bring to you a new series called Musket Theory, which goes over my favorite deck of all time, Magical Musketeers. And what I'm going to be doing in this series is going through how I feel about the deck, uh, how I feel it should be played, um, why I don't think it should be played like it's always been played, and go through some deck lists, some theory, uh, some ideas for uh, builds. Um, in this episode, episode one, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. I'm going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the deck, how it interacts with the meta today, and then give you uh, the first deck list, which is what I'm going to call the standard deck list. Um, it's the least weird one, I suppose. And then in future episodes, I'm going to go through other deck lists, which have other ideas uh, for combinations with cards that you don't really see Musket with. Uh, what you're not going to see is Musket Dogmatica, Musket Eldritch, Amazement, Musket... Um, I don't think those decks go with what the deck should be doing. And what I think the deck should be doing is more comboing than control. Um, I think the strength in the deck lies with the monsters. And what do the monsters do? They search, summon from deck, summon from grave, draw two. This is what you see in combo decks, but instead, people are focusing more on the spell traps, which all require a musket on the field uh, in order to resolve. And the spell traps also clear your opponent's stuff rather than give you stuff. And I think, you know, kind of, it's almost Patrick Hoban theory. I'd rather give myself more cards than take away cards from my opponent. So this kind of focuses more on um, how to best use the strengths and weaknesses of the deck, how to not lose, you know, auto, this deck auto loses to a lot of stuff. Um, so we're going to talk about what it auto loses to, what we can play to best, uh, to have the best chance of avoiding that and to make this as competitive as possible. What I hope you guys take away from this is not just take the deck list, you know, take up the locals and expect to win. Probably not going to happen, you know, uh, Maybe, who knows, but what I want you to take away is kind of just a different way to think about the deck. Take away the ideas. Uh, I want you to at least consider that this deck is not about the spell trap, the musket spell traps. And, you know, I want some feedback as well on, you know, hey, maybe I am not thinking about a card or some kind of interaction or some neat idea. Uh, and I want you to at least, you know, maybe leave in the comment section below maybe some deck ideas. That'd be awesome because um, I want to go against the grain a bit. I don't want to, you know, see every musket deck ever plays three cross domination, three desperado, two last stand. You know, I, I don't think that's what we should be playing. I think we need to fill the deck with cards that will make you a bigger board have more interaction with the opponent and uh, you know possibly just a whole different way to play the deck I think there's a lot of potential in this deck based on what makes it good and yeah uh, let's talk about it okay guys so I want to go through some strengths and weaknesses of the deck and I think it's important to write them out and you should I think I recommend doing this with any deck you're playing any deck you want to build is write down the strengths and weaknesses of your deck that way you can deck build in order to maximize the strengths of your deck and minimize the weaknesses, or at least um, alleviate as much of the weaknesses as you can, and that's how you're going to make any deck as competitive as possible. So let's start with the strengths of Musketeers. Uh, the first one is flexibility. It's awesome that your monsters will proc off any spell card in the game, so you can play any engine you want really and resolve your musket cards. The musket Musketeers are your monsters. Any spell engine are your spells. So there's just so many engines you can play, so many ideas, so much, again, flexibility in how you can build your deck. The second strength is Max. Max is a link one that can let you go plus three, plus four, and that's just insane. So we need to maximize the chances that Max will resolve and that you can get to it. And that's how we're going to maximize our chance of winning. The third strength is kind of odd to talk about. And I wrote it down as monster card interactions. But 
Just that you can use all of the monster effects of the monsters that you draw uh, if you play the right cards. So uh, say you draw Caspar and another monster, you can Caspar, search Crooked Crown, summon that other monster. Uh, you can Starfire, uh, summon like Kid Brave, use Kid Brave's effect, discard the extra monster in your hand. So drawing multiple cards, even though they're all normal summons, you can still use them all uh, quite easily. So um, we want to play cards that let us, or that maximize the chance that we can use all of our monster effects. And if we can resolve all of our monster effects, we have a good chance of winning that game. Uh, now let's go with the weaknesses. Uh, you probably know this one. It's The deck is very reliant on the normal summon. And that's probably why this deck has not been successful throughout its history, is that uh, if you normal summon your monster and it gets cleared by anything, trap card, you know, solemn freaking compulsory evacuation device no good uh chuche heretic seals the link to uh you know battle butler on your normal summon rusty bard h pop conquistador For anything that hits your normal summon gets it off the board is not good so we need to figure out what we can do about it uh in order to uh, alleviate this weakness uh, the second weakness is going first, uh, and this is kind of along with the strength of Max. Max is only good going second, and the biggest strength of your deck does nothing going first, and that's just not not too good. And that kind of you know ties in with the normal summon. You can't go first to make sure your normal summon goes through because, well, hopefully you know whatever musket spell traps in your hand aren't good enough, and it's probably not the case. Uh, the third weakness is that all of your spell traps require a musket on board. So if you go normal summon and they clear it immediately, you're left with a hand full of dead cards. You cannot, uh, you know, continue on with these spell traps. Um, and that's not good. And for that reason, uh, as you'll see in the deck list in this series, we're not playing a whole lot of musket spell traps, even though they are very good when they resolve. They make your deck very weak to a normal summon clear, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. Um, with that being said, we're going to talk about uh, the normal summon weakness and what we can do against the meta, what we can main deck to avoid this weakness as much as possible. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at uh, some of the most popular decks of the meta right now. This is pre-bowed. Uh, I know Sword Soul and Flunder is coming out, and the reason I'm not really talking about those is because I don't know that much about them. Um, as far as I know, Sword Soul puts out a couple negates like Baron and something else. Or maybe the tra uh, some trap card. And then Flunder can drop Ryza on you. They can drop Apex Avian on you. I think they have some kind of like Book of Moon effect. And Book of Moon is Book of Moon on your normal summon is just as bad as any of these, so. Uh, but maybe some of the theory for these interactions will help with those decks. So for virtual world, the main problem is Chuche. If you go normal summon musket and they Chuche it, that's a problem. So uh, I wrote down some cards that I thought of off the top of my head that would deal with Chuche. One is in engine, you're already playing Desperado. You just pop the Chuche in response, and it won't resolve. Then we have Cosmic Cyclone, or you know, Twin Twister, or something. Uh, and then Ghost Ogre, I know it's not very popular right now, but if Ogre comes back into the meta, it's pretty good against Chuche. Um, Last Stand is not good against Chuche, because I believe Last Stand negates the activation of a trap card, and Chuche is already face up. So it's just activating an effect, and not activating the card. So I don't think Last Stand works. I might be mistaken there. Dragon Link, Heretic Seal is probably the biggest problem for this deck because it's so hard to counter that effect. It tributes for cost and bounces your normal summon back to your hand. That's a big problem. And really, the only thing I could think of, the only things I could think of is Called by the Grave, of course, negates the seal effect. That's the optimal situation. And then Crooked Crown, 
uh, is kind of another option uh, just to summon the card that they bounce right back to the field. Um, so that gets you around seal. But other than that, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. And yeah, this is the, the primary issue. For Tri Brigade, we have Revolt. Um, Last Stand will stop it. Cosmic Cyclone will um, will bait it so they can't just uh, you can use cosmic before you normal summon and then they have to burn the omen uh, before you have a monster on board so that's really nice as well and then ghost bell but ghost bell is kind of susceptible to appaloosa which they'll probably also have out um for phantom knights there's bardiche pop and i'm pretty i haven't played against phantom knights that much but i'm pretty sure that they go rank up um on something to a Bardiche arrow and then they just pop your normal summon and that's kind of a problem. And the real, the really only um, card you're going to be playing to avoid that is Cross Domination, uh, just to negate the Bardiche effect. I guess in theory you could also play Last Stand to negate the um, rank up spell as well. So uh, I, I didn't really think about that, but Last Stand I think also is a good option. Um, and then lastly, we have Eldritch, which is a uh, Conquistador, oops, Conquistador um, with Sanguine, will pop your normal summon, and to avoid that, it's kind of easy, relatively, well, it's easy to come up with cards to stop that, which is Last Stand on either Conquistador or Sanguine. Uh, we have Cosmic Cyclone on the Conch, or we have Ash on the Sanguine as well. So we want to look at this list to see what cards we can play that will deal with multiple problems and I think Cosmic Cyclone is very good in muskets just because it deals with all three of these things and obviously this list will change with the format but almost everything will have back row uh, every format will have some kind of back row and for this format especially Cosmic deals with three of the primary problems for musketeers um, and then called by is just always good. So what we're going to be playing is cosmic called by uh, to try to alleviate the normal summon weakness of musketeers. Uh, and then as you'll see in the list, we're going to be playing um, some of the musket cards. Unfortunately, you cannot search them before you uh, have to deal with this problem. Like you can't go into max and get cross dom in order to stop a Bardiche pop, like you're going to pop your normal summon and you won't be able to search it in time. So you either have to max out on these or play other cards to get around it. Um, so with that being said, let's go into the deck list. Um, I'm going to show it to you with uh, real cards and then we're going to come back here and I'll show you the overall deck list uh, online and just kind of give some closing thoughts. Okay, starting with the main deck, we're playing three Starfire, three Caspar, three Kid Brave, and two Calamity. Uh, I think 11 is a good count for Musketeers, just to see one in your opening hand when you're going second. Pretty darn good chance of seeing one. And what I'm not playing is Doc, and the reason is that I want to end the game in one to two turns. I'm trying to flood the field with monsters. This is I guess you can call a combo musketeer build. I just want to flood the field with monsters, bait all the, all the negates, and OTK. Doc is for recycling spells and traps, and you only are going to be playing, I guess, one extra turn, and I don't think recycling is really necessary. You're not going to grind much, and when you are, you're going to grind with your extra deck and just uh, reusing these monsters, and you don't really need to see your... Musketeer spell traps anymore. So I think this is the monster count That should be played For hand traps, I'm only playing three effect Valor And I know that's kind of weird. I'm only playing three hand traps and go second build I'm just asking them to get killed, but um, This card breaks boards insanely or this deck breaks boards insanely well um, playing effect Valor specifically for Hulk Selene access code access and you'll see some other cards in the deck that kind of facilitate that. So it's just a nice option to go into if you draw Valor and you use it, you have a pretty good chance of going into 
access code uh, on your next turn. So I'm playing three Valor. And that's it for the monsters. Uh, onto the spells, I'm playing three Talents, three Cosmic Cyclone, three Pot of Desires, three World Legacy Succession. I think this card is insane in Musketeers. Um, obviously, Max is a Link one, so just drawing a Musketeer and World Legacy Succession gets you two monsters on board. That's the simplest interaction but obviously if you just add another card to the mix if you activate succession under a musketeer uh you're getting an effect uh maybe to summon like starfire plus another monster you're just you're really just going to flood the board with monsters uh, with these texts so playing three heritage of chalice and one infernoble arms hawkler um i love this engine in musketeers i think it's insane I don't know if anyone knows about it. Uh, if you've watched my Sky Striker profile, I also featured this engine in Sky Strikers, but I came up with it for Musketeers first. And I'm gonna go through some combos of why I'm playing this engine in Muskets. Uh, what it really is, is a searchable chain block for Max. Uh, in addition to a pop, in addition to having two spell activations on your Muskets. So I'm just gonna, I'll show you like a brief interaction with the Musketeer Monsters and why this engine is insane and I think is should be staple for going second Muskets. Um, on to the next spells, it's just the limited cards. I'm playing one Mind Control to break boards. I'm playing one Called By just to make sure Max resolves. I'm playing one Reborn and one Upstart Goblin. These are just free spells to activate under your Musket Monsters, um, Reborn is just combo facilitator. I'm playing three succession and one Reborn. Like I said, I'm trying to flood the field with monsters here. I'm trying to OTK. So any revival is good. Plus Reborn, if they like pop your musket with Chuche or something like that, or Battle Butler, you don't just lose immediately. Uh, and then onto the Musketeer spell traps. I'm only playing two Cross Dom. Two Desperado, one Last Stand, and one Crooked Crown. And I know that's weird for what is standardly seen in musket builds. And once again, I'm trying to OTK. I'm not trying to grind. Uh, all of these are searchable. Max will probably resolve if you draw one of the four Noble Arms cards. So when Max resolves, you're probably going to be searching one of each of these. And that's all you're going to need. You're going to use them to clear the board. You're going to flood the field of the monsters. And you're going to OTK. Um, you could, in theory, even cut these down to one each. Uh, but I'm playing Desires. And these are the best ones. And they're not terrible to open either. You know, if Cross Dong gets you through a Winda. Winda's pretty hard for this deck. Desperado gets you through Chuche. Uh, gets you through Imperial Order, for example. Uh, it's just a free Appaloosa kill. Honestly, normal summon a musket, activate Desperado on Appaloosa, and they can't do anything. Um, so it's really nice. And now I'm going to go through uh, a little more discussion of why I'm playing certain cards. And it's mostly the spell cards in the deck. Um, let's start with Cosmic Cyclone. I think Cosmic is should be mained in muskets. And that's because of all of the reasons that muskets have problems. And I think the main problem for muskets is that when you normal summon and you lose it to an opponent card effect, uh, you can't really continue. So I kind of took a look at, okay, what decks, what cards are decks playing that do that to you? Um, and I saw we have Brain Kids, uh, their fusion spell, Cosmic Cyclone deals with that. We have Virtual World with Chuche. Cyclone deals with that. We have Dragon Link with Tidying. Uh, Cyclone deals with that. Um, and then just any other kind of back row. Uh, Solemns or whatever. If you can just Cosmic before you start your plays, um, you're kind of setting yourself up for something good. Talents is really nice for extension. You're almost always going to either steal or um, draw two just because we're trying to OTK them. And I think Talents is an insane card. Um, too good not to run in any deck that is good with spells. Three Succession. Um, 
again, we're just trying to turbo through monsters. We're trying to crank out access code. We're trying to crank out uh, the link five to get through problem cards. Um, I'll show you my extra soon. And um, succession just lets you extend so hard because you can, for example, summon Calamity off max, activate succession under Calamity, and we bring back two monsters at once. Um, I just think that revival and just cards that get more monsters on board are really good. Uh, you could even play stuff like Ready Fusion or Instant Fusion um, if you find the space in the extra deck. I've been thinking about testing Ready Fusion. I only have one though, so um, that might also be good. And now I'm going to go into Heritage and Hot Claire really quick. So Hot Claire, for those that don't know, it either allows your monster to attack twice or uh, when it's equipped to a monster, and that monster goes to the graveyard, um, you can target a monster on the field and destroy it. So the basic, the most basic interaction is just having Hot Claire with a musket card, equipping the musket card with Hot Claire, and then linking into max. And then you go max chain link one, Hot Claire chain link two, targeting something your opponent has probably. Uh, and then that chain blocks your max. They can't ash it, they can't negate it with any on-field monster effects, like Appaloosa or Crystal Wing or whatever. Uh, and that's just really good. Um, obviously when I equip my musket, you can equip it right underneath and proc the effect first. Um, which is just a really nice interaction with Heritage, because Heritage is pretty much just two spells that you can activate under your musket card. So. In the very nice situation where you draw Starfire Heritage, you go Normal Summon Starfire, activate Heritage, search the Noble Arms, and then Starfire summons Gaspar underneath. Now what you're going to do is equip the Starfire by placing Hot Claire under Caspar. You're not equipping Caspar, so you're equipping this, uh, and then Caspar. Effect activates, you search whatever maybe disruption you need or another monster or Crooked Crown to summon a musket out of your hand. That's why I'm playing Crooked Crown again. You just want to use all the effects you can in one turn. So if you have like Kid Brave in hand, you can just search Crooked Crown and then you have another monster on the board. Anyways, this is equipped to Starfire. We're going to link off Starfire for Max. Uh, max chain link one, hot clear chain link two, and we're gonna get max off. And um, likely your opponent has something set, a uh, spell or trap, and we can summon a few more monsters. We have something now to activate under those monsters via Caspar, and we just keep comboing off uh, while clearing their board. So um, I really like this engine, Heritage and Hot Clear in Musketeers. I think it's really good. I want to test it more and see how I do uh, in a tournament setting. Okay, now I just wanna go through the extra deck really quick. Um, fairly standard, just a lot of link monsters. So we have three max, 100%, need three max. Sometimes you, if you're going first, you're gonna use max just to resolve World Legacy Succession or something like that. Um, so you do want three, because you're probably if you're gonna go first, you might play at least three turns, and you're probably gonna summon max every turn, so. Uh, it's really good to have three of. Uh, for the Link 2s, just clear the mat here for Link 2s. We're playing one Hip Potion Ingen, one Lib, Rookie Blade Master. This card is crazy. Um, we are playing Succession, so we have access to it um, after we use Succession. And she just uh, breaks boards really well. Now, uh, when she uses Link Material, it's a non target shuffle. Um, so, yeah, she's pretty insane for just. Breaking boards while you're comboing, which is really what Musketeers is all about. Uh, we're playing one Lina. All of your monsters are lights. Opponent's probably playing Effect Valor, so you can bring back Valor, go for Selene Access Code. Uh, and then uh, for Link 2s, uh, more of them were playing the Nightmare Package. And I'll just throw Unicorn in there as well. Um, again, it's just breaking boards while you're summoning more monsters, while you're Link Climbing. And what's really nice about Cerberus and Phoenix is that they point up and max points down, so you do get the extra draw. 
And now for the larger links, we're playing one Boral Sword. Uh, you actually go into Boral Sword quite a lot um, compared to Access Code, just because it puts more damage on board. And you want to win in one turn, pretty much. Uh, we're going into one Evermax, which is nice when we... Um, when we go into Lib, um, you can just go into Avermax as well. Usually, you probably have two Link 2s, so Avermax is really annoying to out for a lot of decks, like Virtual World has kind of a hard time with Avermax, so um, it's just, I think it's nice. It's kind of a flex spot. If you think of something you would rather play, um, you can take that out. But. Um, the Link 5, I think the Link 5 is really good. Um, you're putting four monsters on board a lot. So you, uh, making the link five using an opponent's monster is great. Not to mention it gets through annoying crap like the Ignister link six that's unaffected and 4K and they probably have negates on, you know, engraved on Mari or whatever. Um, you can just link it off uh, for Underworld Goddess and it's kind of nice to just sit on, honestly. And the last three cards in the extra are Halk, Fiber, Exilene, and Access Code. We're playing Effect Veiler. Um, so we can go into Halk with a Succession or a Monster Reborn, uh, right into Selene Access Code later in the game. Uh, we're playing Lina. Lina can get you into Selene as well, so, or just, and just pretty much anything can get you into Access Code. You know, Mind Control is really nice for that as well. So you can just clear their board, uh, and then if you have a Revive spell, you can go ahead and use that and then continue off with Max after you've cleared their board with Access Code, and that's almost certainly going to be game if you can do that hey guys just really quick i wanted to give a quick shout out to the budget players out there i know muskets is kind of a popular deck for budget players and i'm playing some things in this list that are not very budget friendly so i just want to talk about some alternatives really quick um first of all uh in the main deck Triple Tactics Talent is a little bit expensive, and at the time of recording, it's $35 to $40 a copy. Um, so you can consider cutting those out. Uh, and then in the extra deck, um, Helka Fibrax, Selene, and Access Code are quite expensive, so uh, we can cut those as well. And if you're not playing Helk Selene Access, then Valor is kind of optional. Uh, in the main, so I know Valor, Valor is budget, um, but the point of it was to summon Halixlean access code. So uh, these are three more slots um, that you have to work with. And uh, I didn't really put together a uh, very good theory of what we can play uh, in place of these cards, but I'll just go through some quick ideas. Um, just to, I guess, help you get started. It's very easy to just say, oh, I'll just play uh, more musket spell traps and whatever. But that's, I, I want, I really want to stick to the theory uh, that I talked about throughout the whole video, even without the more expensive options. So uh, I'm gonna avoid putting, or avoid filling these open spaces with the musket spell traps. Try to keep the more combo theory in place and uh, let's talk about some options um, so I think Phantasme is fantastic uh, it puts an extra monster on board and lets you uh, fix your hand and draw two and I would be main decking Phantasme but it's just not the right um, meta for it virtual world has it completely dead Elich is dead Flundries is dead Sword, uh, yeah, Sword Soul is dead. So Phantasme is just not that great right now, and that's why I'm not maining it. But if in your locals, every single deck is Link Summoning, Phantasme is fantastic, and I highly recommend playing it. Uh, second is just main deck Red Reboot. Uh, this is a side deck card for me, uh, but Red Reboot is awesome. And uh, if you're not familiar with the interaction with muskets, if you Red Reboot them, they set an extra spell trap and can't activate any of their uh, and can't act okay they set an extra trap and they can't activate any of their traps that means when you normal summon and link into max you have you can summon an extra monster uh, because you summon up to the number of traps they have and you've just given them an extra one so you can summon an extra monster and you can probably clear it um, 
Now onto the extra deck to replace the Helix Lean and Access Code. You can pretty much play whatever links you want. Uh, I put IP here. I know IP is not that budget, but maybe you already have it. Um, so you can play IP instead of any of those three. Uh, you can also play the Topologic monsters. Uh, Topolog Topologic Trisvena is pretty good um, because we have so many revive spells that we can usually proc this. So especially if you get re Red Reboot off and you make Trisvena and then clear their whole back row, uh, they can't respond with anything. And then Zero Boros is just uh, link four. You can play Borolo, Zero Boros. It's, it's really up to you. Um, what you want to fill these with. If you for some reason have access to Ready Fusion but not access to the cards we cut, you can use these spots for Fusion Monsters and just Ready Fusion uh, to extend. Or you can play an Instant Fusion. Instant Fusions are cheap. You can play a Thousand Eyes Restrict or if you have Millennium Eyes or something or Invoked Rage in is good um, just to bait interactions. So. These are just some ideas. It's not super well thought out, but I just wanted to give a shout out to the budget players, give some ideas. Uh, let me know what you would like to play um, in the comments. Uh, let me know what you play in a budget build. Okay, so this is the deck list I just showed you. Um, here's just the overall picture. And it's a bit different than probably what you've seen. Um, obviously, we're only playing six total musket spell traps, uh, which is quite unusual. It's usually about ten, probably three of this, three of this, two less and maybe you're even playing, I don't know, the attack boost one. I forget what it's called. I don't think it's any good though. Um, but yeah, uh, we want to resolve max and keep our normal summon. And I think if we can do those two things, we have a good chance of winning the game. So to resolve max, we're playing Heritage and uh, Equip Guard. To keep our normal summon, we're playing Cosmic Cyclone. And then we just have all the combo we can get. We have Talents to steal monsters or draw two. We have Succession to keep going. We have Reborn to keep going. We have Mind Control to deal with problem stuff and to facilitate our plays. So I think Mind Control is fantastic. Um, and we're just playing as many generic spells as possible that deal with our problems and uh, promote our strengths. And I think doing that gives us the best chance. I want to know what you guys think. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about this particular build, what you think I could be playing instead, um, and just generally what you think about the theory that Musket is more so a combo deck than a control deck. Um, I'm looking forward to going over the future deck list with you in, in the coming episodes, um, which are also pretty combo based, uh, pretty, you know, all gas, no breaks almost. Uh, and then some even like can go first pretty well. So I'll try to show some test hands with the going first builds. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, subscribe especially if you want to see, if you want to make sure you catch the future episodes. I love this deck. I could talk about it all day and I plan to. I might as well. So um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in the future videos. Thanks for watching.